The comet, designated 3I Atlas, has stirred waves of concern after Harvard-affiliated researchers cautioned that updated orbital fits leave a non-zero chance its path could intersect with Earth. The 3I tag marks it as only the third confirmed interstellar visitor ever seen, following the baffling Oumuamua and the more conventional 2I Borisov, enough on its own to command attention. What elevates this from curiosity to urgency is how fast the numbers evolve for a fast off-axis intruder. Small uncertainties balloon across astronomical distances. Early solutions hinted at a clean flyby. Refined data shaved away that comfort. Now the question is simple and stark. What happens if the margins tighten further? By itself, an interstellar visitor is rare. What sets 3i Atlas apart is the mix of speed, chemistry, and timing. Its path is unquestionably interstellar, a hyperbolic trajectory inbound far too fast to be a cast-off from our own solar system. Spectra gathered before conjunction showed a coma unusually rich in carbon dioxide compared to water, an inversion of the usual recipe for solar system comets. That single fact points to formation in an environment colder than where our comets are born, beyond the CO2 frost line of its original star, and hints at a birthplace with different raw materials than those that seeded our planets. Even the green tint observers reported early on isn't the usual tidy story. The balance of glowing molecules in the coma has not tracked a textbook progression, reinforcing that we're dealing with unfamiliar layering and volatile release. When an object like this rounds the sun from our vantage point, radio noise and solar glare force mission teams to stand down commands, the period known as solar conjunction. That means the probes you don't usually think about as comet chasers become the only practical observers. In this case, the European Space Agency's Mars Express and the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter TGO, were queued up to watch 3I Atlas as it swept to within roughly 28 million kilometers of Mars. No one expected postcard images. At that distance, even a powerful Mars camera turns a visitor into a point source. But the instruments can still do work that matters. TGO's spectrometers can hunt for the telltale signatures of released gases along the line of sight, CO2, H2O, and trace species, while Mars Express can log brightness changes and look for any outbursts large enough to swell the object's apparent size. The critical detail is that these observations run on scripts. With Earth to Mars communications degraded, the spacecraft have to watch, record, and store data without real-time tweaks. Whatever they collect sits on board until downlink windows reopen and engineers can retrieve it. Before the blackout, the pattern that emerged was unsettling for how consistently it diverged from expectations. A comet getting active far beyond Jupiter's orbit is already a clue that hypervolatiles, not water, are driving the show. That's what we saw, CO2 dominating the coma with water weak or absent in early passes. The implications are straightforward and profound. If 3I Atlas formed in a disk where CO2 ice was abundant and water ice comparatively scarce, then the chemistry of planet formation around its parent star did not mirror ours. It suggests a colder nursery, potentially around an older, lower metallicity star. In galactic terms, that points to membership in the Milky Way's thick disk, populations of stars generally older than the Sun, with fewer heavy elements in orbits that tilt more steeply through the galactic plane. Kinematic analyses of 3I Atlas's inbound motion are consistent with that picture, adding weight to the idea that this object has been wandering for billions of years, possibly longer than the solar system has existed. All of that context matters for what Mars just saw. If you're trying to decide how normal the behavior of an interstellar comet should be, composition is your foundation. A CO2-driven coma rises sooner, responds differently to sunlight, and can produce odd scattering effects in the dust. Polarimetry, the study of how scattered light is polarized, has been a second source of head-tilting results for 3I Atlas. The polarization curve at small phase angles has dipped deeper negative than is typical for bright, active comets, hinting at ultrafine or unusually structured grains lofted into the coma. 
that doesn't mean artificial, it means the dust chemistry and grain shapes we're dealing with are not the everyday solar system mix, which fits the formation story above. Mars-based vantage points with different geometries than Earth help check whether those readings were artifacts of viewing angle or truly intrinsic to the coma. Early Mars side data suggests the odd polarization profile persisted as geometry changed. Another nudge toward this really is different. The other reason to care about Mars side coverage is simple logistics. When an object goes behind the sun from Earth's line of sight, you lose coordinated global coverage right when activity can spike. Perihelion, the closest approach to the sun, typically triggers dramatic events. Jets switch on, fragments peel away, brightness surges and drops. If 3i Atlas was going to reveal a hidden structure, an unexpectedly large nucleus, or a volatile inventory that shifts as ices deeper in the body start to sublimate, the period bracketing perihelion is when it happens. With Earth blind, Mars orbiters become a relay in waiting, capturing what they can and holding it in memory. In practical terms, that means when downlink resumes, we could suddenly have a stack of spectra and point source photometry documenting a weeks-long interval that no one on Earth could see. If there is a major outburst, the Mars cameras will have noted the jump in brightness. If the coma chemistry shifted, the spectrometers will have recorded the changing bands. If nothing dramatic happened at all, that's data too. It constrains models about how CO2-rich bodies respond to a hard solar bake. A few realities temper the more breathless speculation. A hyperbolic path does not imply aimed at us. The alignment with the ecliptic plane, our solar system's pancake of planetary orbits, makes 3i Atlas easier for us to study and increases the odds of useful geometry with Mars and later Jupiter, but it does not require intention. Outgassing can add tiny non-gravitational nudges to a trajectory that show up as residuals and orbit fits. That's a comet being a comet, not a guidance burn. And bright greenish comas are an old story. Molecules like dicarbon and CN fluoresce under sunlight and can make a halo glow vividly without any need for exotic physics. The chilling part of what Mars saw isn't a hidden engine or an impossible maneuver, it's how consistently the data point to an object made in a different kitchen, following rules that our solar system didn't write. Where this goes next is clear enough to map. After conjunction, 3i Atlas re-emerges into Earth's pre-dawn geometry. Ground observatories will pick up the baton, and the space telescopes with infrared capability will go hunting for the same molecular bands Mars tried to log while we were dark. If the comet suffered a fragmentation event near perihelion, we'll see a change in the light curve and possibly swift evolution in the coma's appearance. If it remained intact, then the outbound leg becomes a laboratory for how a CO2-dominated interstellar body cools and fades. Further down the line, as it climbs back toward the outer solar system, Jupiter becomes relevant, and if spacecraft assets are extended to watch from that vantage, we'll get a final look before 3i Atlas disappears into interstellar night for good. So, what did the Mars orbiters actually catch while we were looking away? The short version, as teams begin to sift the buffers, a stubbornly CO2-rich signature persisting across multiple passes, no convincing spikes in water vapor, and no sustained, genometry-independent signal that would argue for steady directional jets. Brightness fluctuated, comets breathe, but stayed within bounds that models can reproduce with CO2-driven activity. Polarometric quirks remained, which will keep dust grain modelers busy for months. No dramatic change in trajectory is apparent in the astrometry Mars can contribute. The object's path remains hyperbolic and outbound after perihelion, just as celestial mechanics demands. In other words, the chill comes from the confirmation. The weirdness isn't a data glitch or a single telescope's bias. It's intrinsic. And that confirmation carries bigger stakes than a single object. Each interstellar visitor is a sample return mission delivered by nature. Umuamua was a puzzling sliver that refused to vent gas the way we expected. 2i Borisov looked reassuringly comet-like, a familiar recipe delivered from afar. 3i Atlas adds a third data point that stretches the chemistry further than either of those, an object whose volatile inventory doesn't match ours, whose dust behaves oddly under light, and whose galactic kinematics mark it as an elder traveler. Planet formation, it turns out, may be even more diverse across the galaxy than our most flexible models assumed. That's the headline Mars helps write. Not drama, but difference. 
There's also a quiet lesson in how quickly the community pivoted. Survey teams flagged an interstellar candidate, orbit computers nailed down the hyperbola, compositional specialists threw every spectrograph available at the coma. Mars mission planners carved out time and crowded schedules to watch a target they weren't designed to see, and everyone adjusted to the realities of conjunction. This is what readiness looks like, not panic, but choreography. If a future interstellar visitor arrives on a path that truly demands urgency, this is the muscle memory we'll need. When the downlinks from Mars finally finish and Earth's telescopes resume their vigil, expect the narrative to sharpen rather than explode. A clearer CO2-H2O ratio will lock in the formation inference, refined polarization curves will push dust models toward new grain shapes and size distributions, and a continuous light curve across perihelion will tell us whether 3i atlas held together or shed pieces under solar stress. None of that is as flashy as a headline about messages or maneuvers, but it's how mysteries actually get solved. For now, what Mars saw is chilling in the most scientific sense. The data are coherent, they're strange, and they point to a world made under rules we didn't share. 3i Atlas isn't here to threaten, it's here to teach. And even in the quiet hours when Earth had to look away, our sentinels kept watching.